This is the part of my process where I start to get really excited about my painting. So at this point I have chosen a photograph to base my composition on. It answers all five of the questions that I talked about in my last video, which was how to choose a better reference photo. In this video, I will walk you through how I get from this basic photograph to this final composition. I'll also show you how I break down the composition into smaller and smaller shapes and into different types of visual information so that I am able to paint faster and more accurately as I go. The first thing I need to do is decide what are the other elements that are going to be in this photograph because as a composition as it is right now, it is not very interesting. This was something that I planned ahead for. So while I had my camera and aerial view and my lights set up in the same spot, I went ahead and made sure to take a lot of different pictures of elements that I thought that could be interesting in this painting. From here, I hopped on to Procreate on my iPad and started to isolate the individual objects that I might want to include. Now it's just a matter of rearranging objects, resizing them, trying them in different places to help lead the viewer's eye around, to make the composition more interesting, and to really lend emotion to the overall feeling of the piece that I'm trying to achieve. You'll see me play with different compositional ideas here. What happens if I lengthen it? I originally started with a square composition, and actually I think it could be a really interesting circular composition, but when you lengthen it, it kind of adds to the falling feeling that I was interested in. So lengthening it overall, I think was a good choice. I feel like I have a pretty good base for the direction that this is heading at this point. So a lot of the things from this moment on are a little more detail oriented, playing with some of the smaller shapes and answering some of the um, more detailed questions. I'm continuing to play and add elements. I don't really want to box myself in entirely yet. Um, I want to continue to move things around and see how I feel about them. But really at this point, I am looking pretty committed to the direction of this composition. There's a few things that I'm still gonna play around with a little bit, just narrow it down, see how I can make it better, look for any remaining problems and start to maybe go in and even tweak some of the color and the value issues on a smaller scale. One final crop change here to lengthen it just a little bit more and I believe I have arrived. Now without breaking this down visually, it feels like a pretty complicated painting to handle. There's a lot of different elements, um, a lot of different negative space, which actually will help in the drawing process. And there's kind of an unusual tilt to the figure that messes with my brain a little bit. I like it, but it is gonna make it a little bit harder for me to draw. So the first thing that I'm going to do is turn it into a black and white and really reduce it down to some basic shapes because it is those large value shapes that really give the foundation to the whole painting. When I feel good about my values, I'll go back to my final composition and use the layer function on my iPad to draw different types of outlines around my subject and different elements. It allows me to break the shapes down from larger shapes to smaller shapes, which is ideal for getting your drawing correct. As I'm planning my composition, I'm thinking through all of the different steps that I'm going to take to achieve the look that I want. So for me, it's really important to have areas where transparent paint is seen through the opaque paint. And to do that well, I need to have a plan for what that whole transparent layer is going to look like. Okay, I am finally ready to paint. I put a grid on my reference photo that helps me see where things line up and keep track of things, as well as one separate layer where I do about a three by four grid that I can move around on, focus in on certain specific areas. So that's about it for my digital process. I'm excited to bring you another video soon, so make sure you're subscribed. And if you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments.